Wait, you hear that beautiful sound? It's water filling? Yes. Where's the... Where's Rick? Washroom. Okay. So the white pipe is where the water's coming in, right here. Water comes in here, and then it goes out there. We have two lines, one that goes to the shower and to uh, the posh pods and to the, the dorm, the sinks that are there, and the other line goes to the kitchen and the toilet. Um, but it's all, this is all our water storage. Um, you can hear, you can see it's pretty overcast right now, but it's still running. We're still getting water here. So, uh, and that's the courtesy of the Linear Current Booster, which is a, a little electric device that uh, changes the form of the electricity. Hmm. So it uh, drops the voltage, wattage remains constant as the voltage goes down, the amperage goes up, as the amperage goes up, the engine kicks over, sort of like why you can't start your car in fifth gear. So, um, we have a sort of little microclimate here with the water overflowing. Uh, so I planted this tree here. It's a bulimbi. It's, it's kind of water liking. Uh, so we have bulimbi here. We have noni, the marinda citrifolia there. We have a coconut right there. All to benefit from this uh, surplus water that overflows. As was pointed out by Albert and Cliff, we could easily uh, take the overflow from this and put a water feature in here somewhere. And now that they've mentioned it, I'm going to look into the possibility of actually doing that, because that would be pretty cool. We have a little, you know, or at the very least, we could put in an earth bermed uh, solar powered hot tub. You know, <laughs> probably not going to happen, but you never know. Maybe uh, that could be one of the design projects. It could be, uh, it, as long as people stick around long enough to actually do it. So, uh, mm. just kidding. Uh, I would like to take a, a, a ball valve here and a ball valve there and run another pipeline and bury it and run it sort of across the hillscape that way so that it could gravity feed directly to the terrace that's up the hill from the piggery and also the piggery that and also to the kitchen so we'd have a redundant storage system that way um, if I somehow neglected to monitor this the, the tank the, the pump and that pump was um, got the panel got shaded by the plants and the tank was empty we'd have backup water built into the system so well, conversely, I could also do rainwater catchment off of this building and take that rainwater catchment water and also gravity feed it, run it into the line going down the hill. Mm. So redundancy in any system is good. Get multiple sources for your water um, if you can. You talked about something earlier with the resistance in the pipes. Can you just expand well, on that a all right. little? Uh, ba basically, there's a reason why you don't want to do this with a quarter inch pipe. And the reason why is because um, in a, oh, thank you, that felt great, keep going. Up. Uh, the reason why is that, that uh, the smaller the pipe, the more friction there is. And if you've got a lot of friction that your pump is working to overcome, you're wasting energy. Friction, any kind of friction or heat in a system is waste. So ideally, I'm using one inch pipe. If I was doing an uh, 11 gallon per minute pump, I might use inch and a half or even two inch pipe uh, just to avoid the possibility of any friction. And that's particularly important pushing it up the hill. Gravity feeding it down the hill is less important because it, we're just using the, the, the gravity to do the work for us. So we're not spending any energy. So maybe for the going down pipes, you could have smaller ones to reduce. You could, so but I really less... like one inch pipe. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so. Anyway, uh, so hear the throaty roar of the, the solar power um, making everybody want to go pee, so uh, we'll just continue walking. Now we're going to walk to the spring, which is quite a distance. We're going to walk about 1,800 feet uh, from here to the spring. What is your pipe made out of here? Uh, it's this right here, polyvinyl chloride. Oh, so it is PVC. Yes. Isn't that that stuff that makes you sick? Uh, it, it can. Um, and the thing is, it's one. It, one it, it's a design consideration. There are all, all. There are alternatives. They're just not available in Belize and outrageously expensive. Mm. So.
<laughs> yeah. Okay. We also have you see both of these buildings here have sinks so you can brush your teeth uh, or get drinking water. It's nice to have a little bit of water. This is our uh, drying floor yoga studio, <laughs> Cobb construction disaster depression area. <laughs> Don't go in there lifting up things, by the way. Why is that? Snakes like to kind of hang out. Snakes? Yeah. I mean, like, hang out on the drying floor as much as you want. Just be careful down in the, in the bottom area. Uh, anybody know what dragon fruit is? Oh, is that the, that's like a red <laughs> peach? It's Pita Aya. It's uh, also known as Hyloceros undatus. And so it's, it's, uh, it's actually from this area, but it's mostly cultivated in places like Vietnam. So it's we're... Like a plum that's red? It's like a cross between a Salvador Dali painting and an artichoke. Uh, it, <laughs> looks, <laughs> it, it looks surreal. The first time I saw one cut in half, I thought I was in a modern art picture. Uh, this was before computer-generated graphic design. So it just looks surreal. So anyway, what we're doing here... Uh, what the guys are doing is they're working on uh, putting swales more or less on contour to allow water to infiltrate and to catch soil. Um, we're using Gliracidia sepium as a growing medium um, for the pita aya to climb up on. It's a, it's a cactus and gives a beautiful, beautiful uh, flower and a really yummy fruit. Very, very high in sugar. Um, so, anyway, uh, since we were here, I just thought I'd point it out. So Julio, you're in, like directly in the sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now work over here next to Arminio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. This area here got burned in the fire and we've expanded into it. We've got an avocado there. We've got all the bigger peas out here are in the edge the two little pods developing, that's the one that we're using for alley cropping. I haven't talked about that yet, but I will before the course is over. Um, you can see a few flower there. Uh, we pull one, Hachi Wa, Christopher did. I'm channeling my inner seven samurai. <laughs> I would have thought working off the angle over the fire. <laughs> This tree here with the red freckles on it is a, uh, a guanacaste, that's in Terolobium cyclocarpum. It's also very valuable timber. But it was one of the trees that we had planted in here that was doing okay, but it was competing with other stuff. And when the fire killed everything else, it took off. So uh, this will eventually be oh, absolutely enormous. This tree right here. Guan uh, the, yeah, it'll be, it won't be a saba. Uh, but it'll be it'll be huge and it's leguminous and the wood is very good. You can make canoes with it stuff like that. Is that the one with Which the one? seeds that that's look like donuts? That's the one donuts? that's just used for, for, uh, for uh, fuel wood when it's dry. What's that? Is that the one with the seeds that look like donuts? They're, well, it's like like little... Yes, yeah. Ah, yeah. that's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. So um, how did it use to be required? Was it like, like the it was, underground type? It was. Thing? It had created enough shade that nothing damaged it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Look so, how much water. I hear your pretty good, but still. Through. Pretty cool, dude. Catch Aldi over there. Yeah. No sliding, right? Uh, he's probably okay, exactly sorry. Here. What's he talking about? Skateboard ramp? Yeah, you're, you're just going to have to peer over our shoulders and then we're going to kill it by accident. There's no way around it. Actually, oh! Okay, hold on. Everybody walk. Oops, nope. We just, yeah, now we can walk. Buy it. There's a skateboard ramp. Yep. 
an odd place for a solar panel. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, we it looks abandoned, doesn't it? It sure does. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it fell from. Somebody. Looks like uh, I should take to my house. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's got the serial number on record on the back, <laughs> and uh, and it's a it's a 24 volt panel. Uh, I just uh, periodically I come out here to clean the, the grass around it because um, it will anything that grows over it will degrade the efficiency, and then I clear the bush around it. But we're getting more water than we really need. Um, this is, as you will see on the back, a 24 volt panel. Uh, it was an engineering sample that I, I managed to get from BP Solar. I had a friend of mine uh, that I'd never actually met, but we wrote a lot, who uh, has been a big supporter of MMRF and also a big supporter of uh, the work we do with community water pumps and has donated panels to us in the past. Unfortunately, BP Solar may have been jettisoned by the company because I, I'm not I, they're not making panels anymore, and I don't know exactly what's going on, uh, so we'll find out. Donated this panel? Yeah, they donated it to MMRF. Yeah, so as much as we all hate BP for the, the, as much as some people hate BP, not me personally, for damage they did to the <laughs> Gulf of Mexico, uh, BP Solar is a great company, and the, the engineers that work for BP Solar, they're solar people that happen to work for an energy company, it happens to be... Uh, BP and uh, for all the shit that BP caught um, in the wake of what happened out in the Gulf of Mexico uh, you have to keep in mind that BP was the first oil company to admit that global warming was real and that uh, petroleum use was a causative uh, and it was Sir Something Brown uh, who came up with that I read a really really good interview of him and made me buy only BP oil if, uh, and uh, gasoline when I was in the United States where I had that option from that time on and then he said we're an energy company we're expanding into solar one of the biggest solar manufacturer makers in the world um, so anyway we, uh, as Ranisha is looking at it uh, we have this is sort of a, uh, we have it wired so that there is a fuse here and then hiding in the bush right here is our linear current booster mm. and you can see um, that's it, and then... That's the control panel yep, thing? Yep, this is the control panel. And it shows so, you, you can count the beeps, and it tells you how many volts are coming out of an output. And uh, this is it, this is basically a tr an electrical transmission. So, uh... Is that basically like a feedback thing? Is that what that, what do you mean by electrical transmission? No, it basically, it senses uh, what the, end, the motor on the pump needs to run and then it changes the electricity to meet what the motor needs. Are you, are you referencing that thing in the car that changes the gears? I, I, I use that as a, a metaphor, yeah. Oh, okay. But what this does is it, it's similar to that. It just drops the, the voltage to meet the voltage that the pump needs to kick over. So, okay. So um, I'm going to weed up a few more plants over here. Everybody back off over that way. I'm going to be swinging this dull machete around. And, uh, Do all those wires, um, I mean, but, yeah, do you have to worry about them getting tangled? A stuff? little bit, but... The last time I installed this was after the fire, and I was just in a blind panic to get everything running for these 20 kids that were showing up for our uh, training So, you know, I put my neighbor in How deep is it? Um, it goes into a cave, and the cave is, I don't know how deep. Okay. Because um, every time I try to peer down there You're, with a flashlight and a, a mask, it gets silty. Yeah, so. okay. I'm going to move up so people can kind of change out and see it. Oh, oh. So you follow this, you go to the cave, or you go to the river? Well, that's the cave right there at the bottom. And it, it flows out to the river, which is like right over there.
I see the hose. Let's turn off. Nope, turn slowed, off. slowed down, passing cloud or something. It's coming back. She's on vacation. Did it take a while to find this, Chris? Uh, no, I found it and I left my house, I found it about an hour later, because I knew more or less where it was. Did you walk through the brush or I go? I walked through the bush, yeah. I didn't want to open it up from the riverside because nobody really knows that this pump is here, or they, or they do, but I don't want people to, I don't want to advertise that I've got this solar panel equipment sitting there. I've never had any problems, this is a pretty good community, um, but, you know. I'll come up. So this thing... We have it running right behind our house, like mm -hmm. 200 yards. We'll go swimming behind our house. And, okay. yeah. The last time we